Welcome to your writing tutorial. This tutorial will help you write a paragraph response to a prompt from any discipline, math, science, social studies, English, and more. As you watch, feel free to pause to take notes, rewind to understand important details, and look at your assignment and writing as you attend to the example in the video. Ready? Let's go. Today we will explore compare-contrast writing. This is the third video on this writing topic. If you have not seen the first video, you may wish to review it. The writing task for Compare Contrast deals with subjects, multiple subjects, and two or more. You may be showing the similarities between those two subjects. You may be showing differences. Or you might be showing different aspects of a single subject. It depends upon your writing task. Let's take a look at the sample prompt. Compare and contrast ionic, polar covalent, and nonpolar covalent chemical bonds. This is a simple prompt from a science class. It requires us to compare and contrast three subjects. Two tasks for three subjects. It's quite a lot of information. Let's see the student answer. An ionic bond is when one element gives valence electrons to another ele element. This transition will make the number of valence electrons in the receiving element be the number eight. Once the receiving element gains however many valence electrons it need to equal eight, the element is happy. A covalent bond is a bond formed when two atoms share electrons instead of transferring them. The elements will share electrons so they both gain electrons. An example is when one element has seven electrons and another has one. The two elements will share an electron so the second element has eight. The nonpolar bond is a covalent bond in which electrons are shared equally. This answer demonstrates quite a bit of strength. Three subjects leads the writer to three paragraphs. And even though that last paragraph is rather short, the first two provide quite a lot of detail. This student writer obviously knows what he's talking about. However, we should identify one problem. What about the topic sentence? A topic sentence should embrace the entire writing, and unfortunately, this student has none. Before we fix the problem, let's remind ourselves about topic sentences in prompt-based writing. A topic sentence in prompt-based writing should restate the prompt and add an answer. That's a bit challenging when you're talking about three subjects and two thinking tasks. Comparing and contrasting three subjects in one topic sentence? How can that possibly be done? This student has probably avoided the topic sentence simply because he realized that the task was pretty complex. But, of course, it can be done. How do I write a compare and contrast topic sentence? Here's one piece of advice. Avoid this sentence. These two subjects have many similarities and differences. This is vague. English teachers do not like this topic sentence or this thesis. When they read it, they understand that the student writer doesn't quite know where they're going with the paragraph or essay, and they dread what is to follow. Avoid this topic sentence at all costs. And remember that you can state the similarity and difference in the sentence, and you should do so. How do you do this? Here's a formula. I call it the although formula. You fill in the blanks in the bracketed areas. The only language that you should use is although, comma, they. So, although, fill in your subjects, and then fill in a similarity or difference. They, and then fill in a similarity or difference. Confused? Sure, I understand, but we'll see it through a model example. Let's look at the student answer again. The student answer seems to focus on how all three of these are chemical bonds, but they share electrons differently. That's the idea in the writing. If you're confused about the topic sentence, reflect on what idea you are developing in the writing. This student focuses on how the sharing of electrons is different. That's the focus of this student's paragraph or series of paragraphs. So let's go back to the compare contrast topic sentence and the formula. We know what our subjects are, and we know this student wants to focus on a difference. So in the first section, although subjects are the same different, state the subjects and state the similarity or difference that is not part of your focus. Then, in the second half of the sentence, they are the same or different. State the similarity or difference that is the focus. Still confused? I understand. Here's your example. Although ionic, polar covalent, and nonpolar covalent are all chemical bonds, 
they share electrons differently. Notice that I use the words although and they as part of my formula. But ionic polar covalent and nonpolar covalent were my subjects. I filled those in. Our all chemical bonds is the similarity. I filled that in. Share electrons differently is the difference, and I filled that in. This sentence is clear and to the point and shows your English teacher or science teacher or math teacher or social studies teacher that you know exactly where you're going with this paragraph or series of paragraphs. Further, it has joined three subjects and a compare and contrast thinking task. All of that fit into one clear, complex sentence. It can be done, and if you follow this formula, although subjects are the same or different, they are the same or different, then you can apply this to just about any compare contrast topic sentence or thesis statement. Let's look at another sample prompt. Contrast relative age with absolute age in examining rocks. This is another science prompt. Here's a student answer. Absolute age and relative age are very similar, yet they are also very different when examining rocks. Absolute age of a rock determines the age of it by using properties of the atoms that make up the materials. On the other hand, relative age is the age of a rock compared with the top layer to the bottom layer beneath or above the rock. It is compared with different or other things. On the contrary, both absolute and relative age are used to de determine the age of a rock. They are both also related to the law of superposition. Absolute and relative age have their differences, but also have their similarities. This student obviously knows what she's writing about. She understands the topic. However, the weakness of that topic sentence leads to a little bit of confusion with development. Let's look back. How do I write a compare-contrast topic sentence? Absolute age and relative age are very similar, yet they are also very different when examining rocks. This is the student example, and it is the student example that we wish to avoid. Remember, avoid, they are similar, yet different. This says little. Apply the although formula. Once you apply the although formula, you can see this. Although absolute and relative age can both give the age of a rock, they examine different qualities of the rock. This clearly states the compare and contrast difference. They both give the age of a rock. In the student answer, that was a subsequent sentence way down in the paragraph. Now the student can state that similarity in the topic sentence and avoid that lack of confusion later on. The science teacher reading this paragraph understands that the student knows where they're going. They have already stated that both of these determine the age of a rock, but now they will examine the different qualities of the rock that both age determining technique focuses on. Let's review. We were focusing only on topic sentences with this third compare contrast video. And do not forget that you should answer a prompt by finding the correct subject and providing an answer. We've talked about that in previous videos. What's new here? Provide both the similarity and difference in the topic sentence specifically. You can do that by applying the although formula. The although formula will work with just about any compare contrast writing. Will you modify it? Sure. Will you vary it from time to time? Certainly. Will it take a different shape when writing in a larger essay as a thesis statement? Sure, it might. However, if you keep focus on the although they formula, chances are good that you will write a topic sentence that is clear and does the task. Do not forget that even though we have not discussed it in this video, you must use strong subjects and strong transition language. The two examples that we looked at did not necessarily do that. So do not forget that you must use those strong subjects and that strong transition language as we have discussed in previous videos.